to do it. Okay, I'm going to call to order the meeting. Have... I'm calling to order the. It's... I'm calling Probably. to order. Yes, ma'am. I'm calling to order the finance committee meeting on Tuesday, January 30th. Um, may I please have an uh, approval of the agenda? So, Peter made the motion. May I have a second? Stephen made the second by roll call. Jill. Yes. Chris. Rob. Aye. Stephen. Peter. Aye. Joe. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I am now opening it to public comment. If anybody wants to comment on anything that is not on our agenda, please raise your hand if you're on Zoom or in the room. Okay. I'm closing the public comment. Okay, thank you. Now the first item on our agenda is discussion of citizen warrant article number 75, Cliff Williams, establishment of Madiket Landfill Working Partnership Committee. And Cliff, please come over to the table. Anywhere. Anywhere you like. Yeah, sit here. I'll sit down here. Show up on the screen. Nice. <laughs> hey, Cliff, we did discuss this at the prior meeting that you were at. So if you would just give us a quick synopsis again of why you put this in and why you're looking for a favorable recommendation from FinCom, and then I'll open it up to anyone on the screen anyone else who wants to make a comment, and then I'll open it up to the committee to ask questions of everybody who's commented up till now. Right, Thank so you. We left here last time we went to the meeting um, and listened to the, I guess, plan. Uh, different things, like for instance, not to pick on people, but when they talked about buying the building for 3.5 million was the mm -hmm. C&D building. Mm -hmm. There's too many zeros in that building. That's just, the, Example of why I get involved with the landfill because you could probably get that building brand new with a fire suppression system for maybe a million because I've built and lost some of those buildings. That's my opinion. So 3.5 million is kind of a hefty price, price tag. Um, I basically brought the article because I think the town of Nantucket and the contractors here in Nantucket. Uh, with the knowledge that they have can uh, in-house take care of the uh, landfill without entering into another contract from an outside vendor, which I think just holds us hostage continuously perhaps the last 25 years or so. So I think we should just go back to uh, using the resources we have, the knowledge we have, and the uh, people we have here in Nantucket to uh, come up with a solution. Okay, thank you. Um, Peter, can I have yes, everybody else speak yeah, first sure, and then we'll sure. ask questions of everyone? Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone on Zoom that wants to say anything? Okay, over to you, Peter. I just wanted to ask, did we once have it? Some, you said we go back to? Well, DPW is still in Okay, <laughs> but it's still employees in the town, though. Right. Not like a freestanding board. No, it was just a DPW. Okay. I believe it's been a while. Okay. Other questions for Cliff? Perhaps we can ask Chris Lowe about the value of the building. Yes. Uh, Chris, if you don't mind. Hello. Uh, yes. So um, the value of the building, uh, we did do a um, quick survey, uh, not quick, but a, a fairly thorough survey of the building as far as structural integrity and, and things and it's it's in good shape for uh, the age of the building and for operation needs um, value wise we were told that uh, in order to build the building uh, it was close to five million dollars when they when they rebuilt it and uh, based on um, based on the uh, the building itself and the ability to be able to try to relocate, another building somewhere else if in fact we did not purchase this building it's next to impossible for a lack of land space or a site assignment uh in order to locate a permitted uh construction and demolition debris building thank you chris drew did you want to add anything yeah i just wanted to mention my understanding is that the 3.4 million dollars was negotiated down from an original uh assessed value of the building that was done by a professional assessor. Thank you. 
Okay. Further questions? Jill? So the commission that you want to have, how is it how is it how are you sure that they're gonna do it so that the town still runs the land? Well, I don't want to speak for other people yet because I've we've talked to them over the years, but mm -hmm. uh Toscana gets rid of C and D debris, Miles Reese gets rid of C and D debris. Um, it's trash. We're not launching to launch new rockets into space. So I think the only um, real question is maybe household trash, what we do with it. And my idea has always been a gasifier. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's not that complicated. And when you enter into a contract with somebody from outside, um, I always use the term held hostage. <clears throat> They've got nothing to lose, only thing to gain. They're coming onto your property. They can put you in a position that you can't, uh, you know, they can hold you up. We we need to get rid of our trash and we need a solution. We don't need to be held hostage. And I just believe, long story short, that bringing anybody else into our into our property, into our island, and having them conduct business is just not the way to go. I think it's it's, it's not complicated. I think we can handle it. I'm just saying, how does your, what you proposed in the article, how does it accomplish that? But we have a work group now who are looking at it. And so how is your commission different than a work group who, uh, that work group maybe, uh, uh, can I finish? Okay. <laughs> maybe the work group wants to recommend that they hire someone. Well, I don't know how, where they're going to end up on, on that committee, actually. I don't think they know where they're going to end up. I mean, they have ideas, but we're still meeting. Are you part of that? Um, I've been to uh, meetings over the years. I went to a meeting from back in 2022. And they compared it to the one I went to maybe uh, just recently. It's probably the same meeting. Gotcha. You haven't gotten anywhere. So how would your commission be doing? Um, well, people like me, I get up at 6 in the morning. I go to bed at 11 o'clock at night. I get a lot done. Um, the last couple of years, I've built about 52 houses couple of roads. I work for the FAA. I have rental property. I believe you don't, you know, you go to a meeting, you make a decision, and you move. And if you run into problems, you fix them. But you can't have meetings forever. I got put in for the gasification, what, three or four years ago? Mm -hmm. So it was and an I, incinerator. Well, I was, it was an incinerator to start. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the following year was gasification. Yeah, well, it was a shredder also. They should have shredded the trash. So I was just trying to get the appropriations in place based on the fact that the way our government works. It takes them a year or two to get things done and you need appropriation. And then I wasn't met with much fanfare. So um... Stephen was first, and then you, Peter? You, Thank you. you. Um, so you, you, you mentioned hiring people from the outside, plus Anna's from the outside. Well, no, I don't think necessarily it's outside. I don't, you know, uh, uh, you know, some company from Germany, that kind of stuff. Local contractors. That's I think that's how it's worded. Like-minded local people who are vested. I mean, when when we have to pay somebody thirteen million or fifteen million dollars to to run the landfill, it's coming out of our tax base, and I'm sure Toscana or Miles Reese or any of us pay taxes, so um, I have a vested interest. I believe so. I know you built a lot of houses. You recently had one moved. Um, you didn't have Toscana move it. Did you have them bid it? Because when I see Toscana bid a house move, it's much higher than some of the other vendors. <clears throat> so what I'm saying is, if that's the price that they're giving to local people, the local contract to the town of Nantucket might be no, no favor. You know, why, why would it be? Um, I think they would probably, you'd probably see someone like Miles Reese or Towscan or, or Goakis or anybody else probably bargain more in good faith than, <clears throat> excuse me, than the people who have dealt with in the past that aren't from Nantucket, aren't even from this country, probably. Right? Not these individuals from, not even, not even from the United States. But aren't these companies, aren't it, I mean, every company for a town contract 
is going to have to submit their bid. It's going to be a request for proposals for some scope of services, and nothing's restricting Toscana or anybody else from bidding the contract. Right. So I think I, I I don't think I'm trying to say I'm going to hire necessarily hire the local contractors. I was wanting to work with, get ideas, and implement a business plan at the landfill. And as I said, the town can run the landfill. I don't think it's that complicated. We have to use local contract. We have to use a contractor or that be a local contractor. We're going to operate it. I'd rather get a bid from a local person. I, I believe we would get a better deal and, like I said, more of a vested interest from people who live here on Nantucket. Like when I grew up, you know, the island was run by Nantucketers. So that, that makes sense to me on, on a few levels. And I think that, you know, with the town construction projects, we should be hiring more local contractors. Um, but, you know, at least in construction, there's DCAM certifications and other things that are holding back some of the smaller contractors. I don't know if there's licensing issues with regard to running a transfer station or a dump or whatever, landfill. Um, well, back up. I know that there are licenses. Um, I know Reese has them because they run their own transfer station. I don't know if any other contractors have them, but they could go now, understanding that we have 23 months before our contract's up and the new vendors selected, and they could submit a proposal just like anybody else. Um, so I, I think that's a good idea. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe this isn't about who's being hired. Maybe it's about who's putting together the plan. And I don't have any problem admitting here in this meeting. I don't I don't know how to select a contractor for something like that. I mean, I could I could help compare bids, but I don't know how to select who should have run at the landfill. Um, but we have consultants who've been working on this for a long time, attorneys who've been working on it for a long time. Uh, I don't know that this group of unnamed people is going to do a better job than they are. Peter? Yeah, I just want to say we have two experts on the county advisory committee now that vast experience. George, that. don't use that word expert. I hate that. Well, professionals. Okay. okay. Perfect. George Aronson, the guy who did the presentation, is our outside um, advisor. And then Howard Matz, I think Howard's on. Howard's on. Yeah, yeah. Is a, is an ex investment banker who spent a lot of time running companies in the waste product, waste management business. So we do have people that are pros and one who's a Nantucketer. Um, the other thing is when you do have an idea for something, like I had an idea for somebody called me up and told me about this, this system and I showed it to our, our professionals mm -hmm. and they're evaluating it based on the ask me questions and I asked the other guy questions. Mm -hmm. There's nobody saying you can't do it. They'd love to find an alternative. Okay. We'd all love to find an alternative. But as of now, no one has found that alternative. Because so the systems that people are bragging about, like this one I saw, there's no one, none operating in the United States. We can't be a guinea pig for that kind of stuff. Because if ours doesn't work, we're in big trouble. Absolutely. Uh, Libby? And Joe, I'll get to you after Libby, thanks. I, I was just gonna mention that if any local contractor who meets the requirements of the request for proposals that we're planning to issue, they should um, respond. And I, I just add that there, I'm going to repeat my comment that I made um, for the FinCom on, on the citizen articles. There are many reasons why it would not be appropriate, safe, or advisable, including significant state procurement requirements, the necessity of specific expertise, experience, familiarity, and working knowledge of a complex solid waste facility. This is not a simple trash facility. It handles 25 streams of waste, uh, uh, has massive permitting requirements, and it's not something that locals could probably just walk right on into unless they have the expertise and experience and requirements and certifications that are called for in the RFP, in which case we hope they will uh, apply for it. I know there's been discussions with some of them. So I just want to mention that and I'm sure anybody from the work group is available to answer questions as well. Thank you, Libby. Joe? I don't think we can forget about the liability that exists to close down this facility. Uh, there's a $19 million liability at this point, and that liability is going to accrete over time. Um, if you want a group to come in, it has to be someone that 
the town can be confident uh, it's going to, because the town at the end of the day probably has to end up picking up that piece. But um, th that's a big number for uh, a group of contractors from Nantucket to show. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, uh, let me go to Chris first and then Curtis, you. Just wondering what sort of process was. So we have this advisory committee, and I get that they don't have the monopoly on um, ideas. Has there been opportunities for people to go? I, and I totally get Reese talks to huge stakeholders of this. Have they showed up and taken the opportunity to kind of give input into the work group and be a part of the dialogue and discussion? Right. So I, I don't know if, if it's been all, it's been going on for a long time. Like I said, I've put in articles to try and motivate in certain directions. And I don't know, I guess I've never been uh, engaged that well. So what I'm going to do is now that we're getting to the 11th hour, and I'm glad it's another year involved in the contract, I thought it ended at the end of this year. Um, I'll get more serious with actually meeting with people again, talking to people again, and coming up and maybe a better plan and a commitment from different people and the ideas. Um, but is there a way to channel that through the work group and make that a constructive part of the process from the work group that's there? That we have here, if they want, if they want to engage, I can't force, I can't force the um, town to engage with me with their work group. But I mean, uh, I can form a, like I said, a, a group of local individuals. Um, I know there was there were people um, from those organizations at the last meeting, mm -hmm. and they've got years of experience with things like gas fires and stuff like that. And I know I've spoken with Sierra Energy over the years. And they worked with the group uh, that was sponsored by uh, Bill Gates and everybody to uh, with the military. Because when the military deploys, they get rid of their trash. They can't leave it in the Middle East. So they, they were gasifying it. So they were spending a lot of money, which is good because search and development of these things. We can talk about things that don't work. We can't be a guinea pig. Um, I haven't talked to them in a couple of years now. So I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm less interested in the specifics of that, which I will not have a clue about. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to read the process under which those ideas get into the system and all the right voices are at the table to make the right decisions. That's right. So I guess uh, I think you're asking me. I mean, I want uh, people are busy. I'm busy. So I mean, I've attempted this several times and it's fallen on deaf ears. So maybe that uh, we're getting to the end. Maybe we'll have more of a rapport. Libby. Um... My understanding of the work group, because I was on it for like three minutes, is that they're all open meetings. The members of the public can come and make comments and ask questions. This is a non-public group. However, we've made it clear that we are more than welcome to take in input, comments, whatever. If people want to get in touch with us and come talk to us, that they can. I know that our consultant, George Aronson, has had numerous conversations with Reese. Reese's operation over the years mm -hmm. and um, you know and when I hear that you know people have been trying to do things out, outside people for years and it's fallen on deaf ears that that's not just because a particular person's idea didn't gain traction because of technical procurement untested um, issues doesn't mean that we're not listening to it Thank you. Okay, um, Curtis. Curtis Barnes, uh, I'm just curious, what does the DPW director think about taking over the, um, the landfill? Has anyone asked him directly? Sure. Um, Go ahead, Drew. I think right off the bat, um, Mr. Williams mentioned something about resources, and that's something we we as a as a town struggle with is resources and and staffing. I know it's it probably sounds easy in theory to say that. The folks working over there for waste options would just come work for the town. Um, but the old days of everything come in and throw it in a pile in an unfine, uh, unlined landfill cell and bury it, th those are long gone. Um, it is a very complex operation. As Libby mentioned, there's 25 different waste streams. The state and federal regulatory requirements are <clears throat> increasingly stringent every every year. Um, and then when you start talking about all, all alternate technologies uh, to handle that and an, an evolving island and evol evolving uh, more or less world that we live in, um, it's it's very complex. So I think that that would be an incredible challenge um, for for the town to 
to take on going forward. Thank you, Drew. Brooke? So um, I guess my comment would be, you know, I've been on this work group for over a year now since I um, joined the select board a year and a half ago. And, you know, we're looking at current information, current, um, you know, up to date, up to the minute numbers on how we're processing waste, the complexity of it, the changing regulations. And my concern here is that a very simplistic um, perspective of the way things used to be is being applied to a situation today that is very different from when I came here in 85 and we just dumped everything at the dump. And um, we are, we have been under a contract that existed that had flaws. There's no question. We acknowledge that that contract had flaws. We, our group is very aware of that and is working diligently to leave flexibility in the new contract that will allow for emerging te te technologies and that we're not locked in and that we can change waste streams, et cetera. So I think um, just for the public's perspective here that we have spent a lot of time thinking about all those variables and plan to address them in a new waste services agreement. And um, also procurement process is that you, you you can't sit down with potential bidders on a, and Libby, you can clarify this, on a procurement and ask them how they think it should be. We structure an RFP and they respond and there, there will be room in the RFP for them to suggest changes on how we process if they think they have a better idea or a more cost-effective way to do it that would bring their bid in below um, anyone else that bids, whether they're local or not. So um, I just think uh, simple analysis of a complex problem is is not um, useful. Thank you, Brooke. Okay, committee, have we had enough discussion at this point on this? I totally forgot and I need to refuse. Okay. Just in the interest of extreme scotch. Okay. I'm gonna refuse. Okay. Can you're gonna add, you're gonna think I'm crazy? Can you go sit over next to yeah. Curtis, please? <laughs> I don't have to. I'm really yeah, yeah, I understand. Thank you, Jill. Okay. All right. Have we had enough discussion? Are we ready to make a motion? Peter, no, oh. a motion. Okay, sorry. If we are, then oh, I have okay. to close the public comment, and then you can make your motion. So if we. So everybody nods yes that we're ready. Okay, thank you. So I'm closing the public comment section of this discussion. And Peter, do you have a motion? motion not to accept. Okay, motion not to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Sorry. Thank you, Joe. Stephen, Maury, and Joe are pipped at the post <laughs> for seconding that. Okay, so it'll be a roll call. Any further discussion of the motion before I take a roll call vote? No further discussion. So I'll start with you, Joe. The motion is motion not to adopt. Agreed. Thank you. Um, Jeremy's uh, Jeremy. Jeremy. Okay, I'm gonna go through the room. I'll come back to Jeremy. Chris. Thank you. Rob. Aye. Stephen. Peter, Aye. Jeremy. Did not. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, guys. I was on mute. I was trying to get off. Um, I, I agree. Okay. Thank not you. Adopt. Thank you, Denise. I. Okay. Motion not to adopt. Thank you, Cliff. Okay. Um, do you know when the windmill people are coming back? Yeah, they're not coming back. Don't you? I don't know. They're okay. going to come back when they want to come back. I'm not, we already made a motion, mo motion not to adopt on both of those articles. Oh, so, so, it's, so it's up to them to come back. They have to rewrite and come back. Oh, okay. I do think they intend to. They do, but we don't have a date. Okay. If you want, if I get a date, do you want me to send it to you? Sure. I was going to leave you the map that shows where you're supposed to show windmills. Okay. But they don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I will. Have it for the next meeting. All right. I don't want to lose it. Thank you. Now you let me lose it. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cliff. Thanks, Cliff. Okay. 
Now I have an FAA map. This is pretty exciting. Mm. Okay, so. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Except they don't want to pay the landing fees. Okay, so um, before we go, let's, uh, committee reports is not on this agenda, so we will not have any committee reports today. And uh, we do have a meeting on Thursday. It's uh, February 1st at four o'clock. It is like this hybrid. We have 20 articles to get through on Thursday, just to give everybody a heads up. We have 112 articles to all together. We have made motions or recommendations on five, just trying to get people to focus. We've got about 10 meetings left, maybe 11. So just, and then um, Stephen, I'm actually gonna turn it over to you on other business to summarize the discussions that we've had um, in the last day or so about the chart, there's, uh, here, I'll summarize it. And then Stephen, <laughs> then Stephen, will, Stephen will correct me. Stephen will correct me. So the charter of the town of Nantucket says that the finance committee makes recommendations on everything to do with money. I'm using the short form, appropriations, blah, blah, blah. Everything else, the finance committee does not have to make a recommendation on. The bylaws of the town say that we make a recommendation on everything. So the But the charter supersedes the bylaws. So what does that mean for us as a committee? That means we, in the future, starting Thursday, maybe, we can say if this does not have a financial, financial um, impact on the town, the finance committee is not going to make a recommendation and leave it to town meeting where I'm assuming I have to get confirmation from Sarah Alger. I haven't heard back from her, where I'm assuming it's going to be town meeting is voting to adopt or not adopt whatever the article was that we did not make a re recommendation on because normally town meetings voting on the planning board's recommendations or the finance committee's recommendations. Now, if Sarah comes back and says, no, sorry, I need you all to make recommendations. Otherwise, who knows what they're voting on? Then we'll have to revisit that. So um, just that's a point of information. It seems like someone has to make a motion or there's no motion. So it just gets passed over. So, well, I think what happens at town meeting is that Sarah would end up having to say, is there a, is there a motion to adopt this or somebody yeah, so sponsor? So right. Make motion right. We want to make that initial roll call and voting in the big bucket to make that a longer process if mm -hmm. we have to get an emotion at the time. Or, right. No, I think it would just be, is there going to be a motion on, you know, we have motions on these articles. Is anybody going to want to make a motion on you to follow up? Right, on the ones that don't have recommendations. And then, yeah, right. It's going to be. I, I, I haven't counted them since last night, but I think there could be dozens of articles that would not come with a planning board recommendation and do not have raised and appropriated in a certain language that require this. To yeah, there would be. Yeah. It, it, it creates a problem, though, because ones that take the most time. there's a lot of people tell me that they vote the way we, we recommend it. Yeah. On, our, on our article. Yes. And I think there's many articles that people don't understand. And I think this is going to open up a can of worms for people to vote on things they don't understand. And I think it for a an advocacy group could ease could much easier for them to push something through, excuse me, push something through than if it had to be commented on. I, I think it's a good point. And so the charter allows the finance committee not to make a recommendation. It doesn't require that we stay silent. So if there's something that's important to you or to anybody, we can investigate it and we can make a recommendation. But we don't have to spend multiple meetings on some of the issues that we have done in the last, in the last couple of years. Jill? Well, following on that, then maybe that's also, I'm not saying this is an answer, but maybe we don't have to already allow people to keep coming back and keep talking about it. We just it, it said when I read it said a, a public hearing. It didn't say multiple. So maybe that would help us on the front end of it. I don't know about it on meeting in terms of emotions, but seriously, like why are we allowing people to go and they change it and they come back? I I, I think it's generous of us and I'm for transparency and I'm for open dialogue and debate and civic participation. So I like how it's working actually. And this is leading for us, ultimately, I hope to have a meeting about the county council study. But, we will. But, you know, maybe we can just say, this is your day, and 
at our hearing. I, I think that makes sense. I think really it's up to Denise as the chair to decide who She's she wants very to the audience to. And you know, that aside from that initial hearing, I think you're right. It, it doesn't have to be an invitation to come back multiple times. And if the consensus on the committee is we don't intend to make a recommendation either way, then the investigation stops. We don't need to have like a conversation. Chris? So does that mean there's no reason for us to review the planning board motions? Right, so those aren't including that. Correct. Planning board, sewer, right. uh, real right. estate. Well, real estate have a financial impact, some of them. But, but a lot of them don't. Yeah. Right. The paper, the paper roads, no, oh. right? But the um, Western Avenue, yes. Yeah, essentially, this becomes, you know, even Brian, make sure he's done the job right. And, right. Um, I will say, you know, there have been examples, I think, we've done really careful deliberations in this group where we've sort of mm -hmm. into some really, I at least have gotten to places I didn't start at, do a lot of interesting questioning on things that didn't fit this definition. And I know you're saying we'd still have the opportunity to, without the responsibility, I don't think we would necessarily do the work that we would get, get that opportunity. So I, I, I do see something maybe getting lost a bit. But well, I, I, I would, think, I would, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I would push for it on, on several issues. You know, I, I think there are times where this is the only place before a town meeting where you're going to have an airing of different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. and, and we should not lose that entirely. Um, and I think Denise, you agree with that. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, whoever the next chair is, um, assuming Denise doesn't want to do this again, I don't know, mm -hmm. maybe this change of scope, you know, changes your mind or you need to stay on. Yeah, let's um, just do whatever but, she but wants to do. Hopefully the agree with that also. We could lose that. I also think this is an opportunity without adding more meetings and more time to our meetings to do more substantive investigation of you know major expenditures like the, you know we brought up the topic last week of housing housing you know lots of money that's being spent there we discuss it several times a year but never in, at, at the length they think it deserves um, and maybe we can do those things more regularly. Yes, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, so say we go through all the articles, 112, and 40 have financial impact. So we definitely do deep dives on those as much as we need to. And then the committee looks at it, each member of the committee, and says, well, you know what? These three, I think, are important, and I want us to work on them. I think that's fine. I think then the committee can also say, I think we need to talk about these. And as a member of this committee, you have... You, we all have the right to bring up what it's an article that we think needs that there's public confusion on. So for example, um, on February 5th, this um, short-term rental articles are going to come up. And those, whilst it isn't, those do have a direct financial impact on the town, but they're not a raise inappropriate. But at the same time, it's important because there's three of them for us to try to do something with them and to see if we can get to a sensible recommendation for the town based on all three that are there. The same thing, um, yeah, so I think they're in the same thing with the rental cars. There's a select board rental car um, regulation article, and then there's the citizen one. So that will also be discussed on February 5th. So those kinds of things, when there's multiple things, I think it is our job to help the voters on the day, because to try to get that done in town meeting would be, I think, hard work. So, and then personally, but maybe not, maybe. Chris. I need to go back and refresh on the stuff that you, I did the same thing as you. I didn't look at it in detail the first time. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned with the finance committee sort of subjectively weighing in on matters that don't fit a financial definition, deciding to or not to feels extremely fuzzy. I mean, we already have the, we've had the fuzziness under the prior definition when people would like, well, why does the finance committee care? This isn't finance. Right. And our answer is, we care because we thought we were charged with every single care. one. Yeah. Now we're going to say this group of individuals is going to definitely do the raise and appropriate ones, and we're going to kind of yeah. pick and choose. Yeah, that might that might, that might not work. That feels a little weird. I don't know. If we're legally, it might be a legal problem. Well, I get we have arbitrarily picking people. The charter says only raise and appropriate ones. The bylaw says all. So. It, Charter, just doesn't it sound more important? I believe it's more it sounds. It's charter. But also, it was written more recently. You know, so I, I think it does supersede the bylaw. Does it supersede? Can the charter be enhanced, by the way? 
Because there are bylaws yeah. that we follow that are not in the charter. It does make We're, sense. There's the bylaw that changed the, John is you know, it on the spot. Changed the intent of the charter, but the bylaws were written way before this version of the charter. So I, I don't know yeah. how to how to reconcile them. Somebody does. He's not on the call. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would be nice. Maybe at next year's town meeting, we could, um, yeah, fix one or the other. You can put like them in line. Is it part of the charter? Think of all the time when I say that topical speech at some point. Wow, that was the. Yeah, it's been a lot of time. That became a very social discussion. Yeah. It was really not about money. No. Um, so remember, it was kind of kill tourism. Oh yeah, and then also it was kind of. Bring more frat boys here. There's going to do lots of fun. I don't remember that. That's, that's, not, that was that's not really what the focus meeting. part to talk was about. I just think it's unusual for a a committee to want to lower the responsibilities that they have, um, to take away a right that we have. I just I just think it's an it's an unusual position. I understand where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but we're giving up power that we have. I don't, I don't, I do not at all think we have power. I think what we, no, seriously. I think what we do is we put a lot of time in and look at articles and try to do our best to guide the voters to what we think is the right outcome for the community and for this island and for the financials of the town and weighing all the things and say on balance, after all of our discussions, this is what we recommend the voters do. And keeping score all these years, Maybe 50 to 60% of the time, the voters vote for what we recommend and the other 40% they do not, which is the, which is democracy at its best, honestly. And so, so with that, um, but I don't think we have quote unquote power. I think what we have is a, a guiding principles that help the town uh, get through the warrant season in a constructive way and hopefully help the community as best as it can be helped. So, I mean, Chris, if we already do this to some extent. We get, where's Joanne? We already like we have to take no action, right? It, so it, it's really about whether we feel the responsibility to thoroughly investigate the right. findings. Right. right. We already do the right, which I don't necessarily agree with anyway, but pass on them. Right. So the only thing is, do we feel the responsibility to have a thorough conversation about it? Right. So. Right. And so far we have, right, which is fine, but everybody, you know. Please bring your sleeping bags the last week of February because <laughs> we're pushing a bow wave here. <laughs> so, Let's see Jeremy. Jeremy, you're muted, Jeremy. I, uh, thanks. I, I I have a hard time hitting the button on and off. Um, I anyway, I, I, I Denise, uh, I agree with Peter. I think Peter is spot on in that in a, a drive towards efficiency is great but no reason to give up uh, potential power, or even if there is some degree of ambiguity from which we could uh, expand something, no reason necessarily to do that. I do however think that, you know, you as chairman, chairperson can channel what we work on. So um, I think we should try and be as efficient as possible, but no need to definitively say, we're not gonna do this or that would be my recommendation. Thank you, uh, Stephen. I, I think this is um, an additional latitude to the committee. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require that we definitively do this or that, or right. that we pass over discussion or even making a recommendation on every single article. But it gives us that freedom, which in some cases, we're not, um, our, our voice isn't welcome and our input isn't wanted. And we spend a lot of time investigating stuff that we frankly don't know a whole lot about and doesn't have any financial impact on the town. And it would be better left for the uh, proponent of an article to bring it straight to town meeting floor. And that may be a rare case and everybody's got their own definition of you know what, what constitutes a circumstance like that. And we can take them all on a case by case basis. Everybody read the warrant, decide which ones you wanna speak on. And I would hope that whoever the, the, the chair of the committee is doesn't stifle that conversation. If you want to bring up an article and have it investigated and, and discussed, then so be it. And maybe that is the vast majority. Maybe it's every article, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be. And that's, that's the clarification. I see the advantage in respect to the planning boards. So in all, I've been now six and a half years 
on FinCom, though it seems longer. Uh, and the only article we've ever disagreed with on the planning board was about the pools, uh, the pool article put in um, a couple of years ago. But every other time we're in full agreement with the planning board's recommendations. So potentially that's something that the majority of the planning board articles we may not need to weigh in on. Jill? I would also bring up though that um, in the fall, we weren't aligned with the select board on the short-term rental. Correct. As well. So it Correct. happens, but it's very It happens, rare. it's very rare. Very rare. You're right. I've been thinking about that a lot in the third council setting Yeah, it, it, it may turn out to be that in the future, our yeah, voice has more weight if it's not on every single article. If you say, hey, finance committee chose to weigh in on this article where it didn't have to, as it sees that this is a very important issue. Mm -hmm. Jill. Also, I, I go back to what you said, both of you, that I would like to spend more time on some of these bigger topics that actually mm -hmm. are, I mentioned on Saturday about trying to find out, you know, how much the island doesn't pay tax. I, I do my own research on this stuff. I contacted the assessor. I found out, like, I'm trying to, you know, figure some things out. It would be really good if we as a group could talk about those things, especially, you know, looking forward and big picture. Instead, I feel like very confined, like we can only talk about something in isolation. Sometimes we get a yeah. global yeah. Chris? I may just paraphrase Steve, I think in, in answer to Peter, we're giving up an obligation though, right? Right, so which is creating more freedom for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Questionable whether it's an obligation to based on disparity between the two. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I do think we should bring the two in line, you know, find out which one carries weight today. We think we know the answer. I, I don't know. I didn't follow the threads this afternoon. Maybe you haven't what? just hit it. You haven't been sitting at your computer <laughs> waiting for emails uh, to fly in? But, you know, maybe we could, as a committee, have goals and objectives on things that we want to investigate throughout the year. And we become something slightly different than the town Florence review committee. You know, maybe we have a larger charge here than there are laid out in the charter and the bylaw. And there's no disagreement about this. We have authority to investigate any expenditure for mm -hmm. the town. But we don't spend nearly enough time doing those things. Can I just ask a question? Chris, up on sure. The topic? Um, capital review committee is that statutory as part of where does that sit? So it seems so like a lot of the finance committee there. can be the capital review committee if there's no capital review committee, but it is it is its own thing. So it seems like a, a lot of the media financial analysis has been actually handed off to that committee. Yeah, well, this committee spends its time on the things. Yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah. But, I, but that is. Yeah, the charter says that if there is no Capcom, that we can be Capcom. So, so what would Cliff's article be? Would that be financially related or not? Well, number one, Cliff's article is non binding. Uh, yeah, I'm just, just talking in general. So, in general, uh, let's pick a different one because that one I, I can't, when, honestly, off the top of my head. When, no, let's pick a different one. Okay. Indigenous uh, People Stay, African Meeting House. Well, well, that, was that, that, that was raised inappropriate, Joe, but thank you. Um, Indigenous People's Day two years ago. We spent 45 minutes on that. Selectman versus select board. Yes. Well, but maybe we go through all the articles at the beginning and say, we're not going to... Uh, uh, not going to discuss this, 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 and this. Can we agree? To Maybe that's. I, yeah. I mean, we're not really trying to come up with a process today. We're just bringing up. Well, I'll, I'll get in a second, Chris. Um, we're not trying to come up with a process today. I'm. I'm just trying to bring up information that Stephen and I learned in the last couple of days, and it's in the links that Libby sent to us, and that's where the discrepancy popped up. And then, um, I, I am. Open that. I am. The, links, the forty-five dollar yeah. book. I have to email and request. You no, know, I, I requested it today. Hopefully, once I have it, I'll send it okay, to thank everybody. You. So, um, this isn't to develop the process today. We can have a working session to do that on how, together with town council, to make sure we're not making any missteps and anybody who needs to weigh in on it. But it's just to highlight to this committee that if necessary, we have another option, which is no recommendation. So, that's just really the intention of it. So, Jill. Well, do we want to go into that process sometime soon with the articles that we haven't heard from yet? 
honestly, I don't want to take personally. I don't know that we can get that process nailed down in the timeline that we have between now and March 12th with the number of articles that are still outstanding. We have so many that are still outstanding. If we get through 20 on Thursday and next and the week of on the 12th and 13th, if we get through the 40 plus that are zoning plus real estate, then potentially we could use some of the subsequent meetings because we don't have so many left over. But right now, I'm telling you, it's we've gotten five done out of 112. No, that's what I'm saying. Can, right. Could we look at those and as a committee say, we're not going to make motions on some of these now, but it sounds like that is in our... And you could say, hey, I really want us to make a motion on that. And I'm open to that. I mean, I'm not trying to... Maybe pending um, comment from Sarah Alger about how... What she wants us, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Pending at, And also, too... I just don't want to take up any meeting time and then end up at the very end where we we're just doing an all day meeting to get all the articles done. So I'm, I'm not willing to, at this point, sacrifice the hours that we have for reviewing articles to use those hours to create a process to not review some half a dozen articles that we end up having to do anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I am the email queen right now trying to get people to show up at meetings for articles. It's a lot oh, yeah, of administration in the background. Taking it, it off of your plate by saying we as a group said we're just not going to make a motion. So we're having a public hearing and you know. Yeah, I thought it was saving you time. No, I know. And I think the, the just listening to this conversation now, I don't know that we'll get to a process in two hours. I'm not sure that we will as a group. Do we have the right to people, <laughs> people that don't show up on time and haven't done their homework, tell them we're not going to comment and we're going to put down there? We didn't comment because it was not totally presented correctly. How would you do that? Comment? I don't need some, yeah, you have no comment. <laughs> well, we but it would be, it'd be two sentences that we have. Yeah, it's very well. Right. We also the right comment, too. We said, good, so then we show up and we read this thing we hate it. Or right. we yeah. Um, no, no recommendation, but a comment. Yeah. Right. The other thing yeah. is, it's so rude for these people to present an article and not, not show up. Or, or having followed the process. Yeah. Taking yeah. the opportunity to I think the council. Yeah. Didn't, again, Denise has been gracious. Yeah, you too nice. Transparent, transparent and <laughs> really open to the civic discourse. And I appreciate you doing that. And we know that's your intention, even if people don't always take advantage of it. But maybe we don't have to be. Yeah. Yeah. My my preference always is that it runs smoothly and people have done their homework. And when people have haven't done their homework, I don't think it should fall to us to correct it. But at some point there is a certain amount of latitude I give people because Maybe they don't know. Maybe they never. Uh, I, I I don't know why, right? And I don't need to know why. And I don't think it helps the voters if we then just dismiss them out of hand and then they show up at town meeting equally unprepared. That doesn't help the voters either. So I'm also thinking, what you know, what's the best thing to do? So, but I, I personally would say, if all your ducks aren't in a row, then we just skip it. But that's not that isn't our that hasn't been our practice so far. And I would be happy if that was our practice, if we declared it in October. Mm -hmm. If you don't get your articles in correct formats, if you don't work with legal counsel, end, 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 and you submit something that actually is unworkable, the finance committee will not review it. I, but we didn't announce that at the beginning of this year. So I, I'm, I'm okay for putting rules in place, provided people have enough advance notice of the rules. That's fair. So, yeah, okay. Thank you, everyone. Interesting mm -hmm. uh, ev evolution, possibly, yeah. of how we work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there anything more on the good of the order or no? Are we finished? We're finished. Now it's adjournment. I'm going Can to ask you put something in for the good of the for the other the for other business. Sure. So I did contact the assessor to find out how much land is not taxed, including um, that's not just conservation land, but uh, properties that don't pay property tax, like, like churches, properties. Yeah, yeah, and it's about sixty-five percent. Sixty-five percent of all the land on the other hand, that would make sense. Yeah, so that report back. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Okay. Anything else? And how many acres is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, at the yeah. point that changes actually with the road so it changes. Yeah, that's year. true. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, may I have a motion to adjourn? Second.
Okay, Jill made it. Peter seconded it by roll call. Joe? Okay, we saw you say yes. <laughs> Jeremy? Yes. Thank you. Jill? Yes. Chris? Rob? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Peter? Aye. Denise? Aye. Okay, unanimous. Thank you, everyone, as always, who helped. Maria, always. Libby, everybody, thank you for being here. Susan? Yes.